As many as 100 people may be dead after one of the most devastating storms in years struck the United States. The state of Kentucky is hardest hit. Dozens there are feared to have been killed in a single factory. Many more were trapped in an Amazon site in Illinois as twisters ripped across state lines. The governor of Kentucky has declared a state of emergency. We are nearing the end of the most severe tornado event in Kentucky's history. Multiple tornadoes have touched down and we have damage in I believe over a dozen Kentucky counties. This has been one of the toughest nights in Kentucky history and some areas have been hit in ways that are hard to, to put into words. We're going to bring in a U.S.-based journalist and meteorologist, Matthew Capucci. Uh, Matthew, possibly up to 100 people are dead. Are you surprised by the scale of this disaster? You know, to be honest, I didn't think that in today's day and age, with the warning systems we have, we'd still be seeing tornadoes with a 100-person death toll. The last time this occurred was back in 2011 with the Joplin, Missouri tornado, which killed 161 people. And before that, you had to go back to June 9th, 1953, to have a tornado in the United States with roughly that many people perishing. So this is kind of a, as bad of an event as you can possibly have. With a tornado that will likely span at least four states, was on the ground for more than 300 kilometers. This simply doesn't really happen. This is a once in a 40, 50 plus year event. And the most amazing part, I think, was the fact that for a high end tornado, we're talking an EF4, EF5 tornado, we see debris lifted to about eight, 9,000 meters. This time around, close to 15 to 16,000 meters. So this event, in all respects, was off the charts. So given that this was a once in a generation event, as you say, uh, could the extent of the damage from this tornado been better predicted and allowed people perhaps to be better prepared for what was coming? So the unfortunate thing is that you have two different sides of the coin you have to look at, scientific and really a, a ingenuity in the way that we structure our warnings and how we communicate them. Now the warnings in all respects were phenomenal. More than two days out, we sounded the alarm for a high and severe weather potential with a level four out of five moderate risk of severe weather issued by the Storm Prediction Center. So we knew this was coming. The warnings blanketed the entire duration of where that tornado actually went. They were there well in advance, in some cases up to 30 minutes in advance, and even souped up tornado warnings called tornado emergencies, communicating an immediate, imminent, life-threatening situation. So the warnings were there. The question, did people take them seriously or did they fall on deaf ears? And so the Midwest, uh, Midwestern United States, rather, isn't a stranger to extreme weather. We see extreme weather events there all the time. I mean, did other things have to fail to see this level of destruction taking place in these states? I think one of the issues is definitely public perception in that these folks are kind of used to tornado warnings that may cause some desensitization. You think about the fact that only one out of every five tornado warnings actually verifies with the tornado on the ground. So there's that. There's the fact that this happened at night. It's not traditional severe weather season. You do get a second season in November, December, but really folks associate with the biggest severe weather potential as being in the spring, March, April, May, when you have more of that warm, humid air. A lot of folks may have gone outside for environmental cues, waiting for damaging wind or hail. And that didn't really occur with this setup because there wasn't a lot of juice, but there was so much spin in the atmosphere. So this wasn't your traditional, typical tornado event. I think one of the things that occurred this time around, the supercell, the rotating thunderstorm that produced this tornado was located near a lobe of low pressure, kind of near a, what we call a mesolobe that helped add rotation and really caused this high end off the charts event. Matthew Capucci, journalist and meteorologist, thanks so much for that update. Thank you.